Hey, it's Rick and Bubba. Welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University. We're thankful that you are here with us. Now, we've been talking a good bit about our relationship with Blaze TV. And and if you, especially now, we're going to talk about it a lot in today's uh, episode. Uh, if, if you're kind of tired of um, feeling like that journalism is dead and gone and you don't seem to have a voice out there, uh, Blaze TV is a great option. And we're living in a time where you can choose the programming that, that you desire. And, and if you've never been a, play, a Blaze TV subscriber, you're really missing out. It's, it's unfiltered, conservative talk. Mark Levin uh, is here. Uh, Phil Robertson uh, is here. Crowder uh, is here. And, um, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. If you would like to find out about Blaze TV right now, if you'll, you'll go to this link, blazetv.com slash Bubba, we're going to get you $10 off your subscription. And, of course, the Rick and Bubba Show, we're part of of the of the programming as well. So so go right now to blazetv.com slash Bubba, get ten dollars off and start your Blaze subscription. So Bubba, this time uh, we don't have a guest. Uh, we're gonna talk about the the current well atmosphere involving the, the politics of our country. Uh, we just uh, we just came off an attempt uh, to impeach which was done and then remove a sitting president uh, now that we're you know, recording this, that acquittal has come down. Mm-hmm. President Trump has been acquitted. Uh, we've been watching Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats with their response and, and her telling us why she tore up uh, the State of the Union speech in front of America. She's now saying she did that because it was a manifesto of mistruths. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think today you and I are almost going to just be kind of talking out loud and trying to hash out this political environment in, in, in which we now live because it's getting harder and harder to, to just simply sit down and hear two parties give you what they think America should be. And then we, as Americans vote our conscious, uh, vote our principles, uh, and, you know, hopefully vote, you know, for what the founding fathers have clearly laid out in the constitution. But, but how in the world do, do we walk through, all the misinformation and and it's funny she would say, you know, mistruths when we know that the way this president was brought into this situation, now we know was based on things that were not true and, and made up. So so how how do we maneuver the, the the waters politically right now? Well, I think we have to go and and look at the bigger picture on this. When you remove a sitting president, duly elected, from the office of the presidency of the United States. That is a major deal. You basically are nullifying an election, whether they're guilty or not, because people elected to put them in there. And there certainly are times that that may be called upon. Uh, That option is in the Constitution. It has only been done three times, a president impeached. Um, And all three times the president has been acquitted. So, the Senate, who is the upper house, the cooling plate, if you will, usually realizes that this is something that we got to take very carefully. Um, I'm certainly not a constitutional scholar or lawyer. I'm just uh, Bubba. Um, but you see when they list treason and bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors you you see the list that it's in and it's a very very high bar to get to because presidents have to have leeway to do a lot of things to be the leader of the country to be the commander-in-chief and um, it's just I I think the senators in all three of these cases and the evidence have has been stronger on some than others realize that when we start going and taking out a president who was elected by the people, we have opened a Pandora's box that certainly will see political payback involved. And before you know it, we have what is commonly called a banana republic. That is where everything is kind of in place, but we know that the people's really not running it. It's, you know, it's all people behind the scene pulling strings and it's a, you get me, I get you eye for eye type mentality on everything. So you know, they've, they've just avoided that, and I think they did that again here. Um, it's uh, And it's really a reflection of our culture right now. We have a very divided culture. I don't think it is the president that has caused that any more than I d- think it is uh, Barack Obama or any of the Democrats. It's just we have two very contrasting styles 
and thought processes on what it is to be an American and be free. And you see that played out in our elected uh, politicians. Well, here's the confusing part as an American, and I'm with you, and, and I'm going to point the finger here first, but I think now it's almost paramount. Here, here's the problem. Some guy stands up or some woman, and they have an R by their name, and they say, I'm here, and what I'm doing is because I adhere to the authority of the Constitution. Mm-hmm. And then, as we just watched uh, before we started recording this, Nancy Pelosi, I have a D by my name, and I stand up and I say, well, the reason why we're doing this is because we stand with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Well, both people have said they're standing with the Constitution, but they're both saying two different things. What what can I, as an American, how do I discern that? Well, it's, don't uh, I have to know? <laughs> I mean, you know, Rick, that's a great question. I think a lot of people are trying to figure that out. That's why we have such a problem. Uh, it, it's just it's amazing how some of this has come down. Um, you have a president uh, who has a style like we've never had before. He is a New Yorker. He has a New York cab driver attitude about things. He is not bashful about doing it. That's the way he's always done stuff, and he has certainly not changed being running or being the president of the United States. And I think that style infuriates a lot of people. Um, I think the other side of that is you have uh, the Democrats and a lot of liberals who have made landmark movement in our country over the past 40 years pushing their agenda, and they're not used to anybody pushing back like he does. And I think it infuriates them because I think they have a kind of an entitlement feeling now that this is the way this is going to go and we're going to push it and we're going to get there no matter what. And they're not used to anybody calling them names and getting in their face on it. And I think that's what galvanizes the people who disagree with them. They love Trump. They, we've said all along they wanted a bulldozer. When President Obama left office, he got gay marriage legalized. He got – you know, late-term abortions uh, done, and now post-birth abortions that that they're wanting to do. We have a group of people that think that's fine. We have a group of people that think that is as horrendous as you can be on a spiritual level. And it is an all-out battle for the culture right now. It is a cultural battle, no no doubt about it. But but I guess back to, and, and that's part of it, I think more than ever, we as Americans, which is how it was supposed to be intended, it, it, it reminds me a little bit, a little bit of uh, Luther and the Reformation from a spiritual side. Luther was saying here, the problem we've got now is we've got these priests standing up here telling you what's in the Bible, and you don't know the Bible well enough to know when they tell you something that's not in there. Right. So he said, we've got to get to the po- point where the farm boy knows the Scriptures and has access to the Scriptures as much as the priest. So then if the priest says something, you then know that is not what the Bible says. Well, maybe it's time for that, and I'm talking to me, that in this country we better, as the people, we better know the Constitution. Because if two people tell us that what they're doing is constitutional, well, then you better know which one's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, so don't you think now more than ever we, the people, need to become educated on our founding fathers, not revisionist history, Become become educated on the Constitution. Become educated on the difference between a pure democracy and a constitutional republic. And because here's what we had. Alan Dershowitz, who claimed he had no political agenda, that he just loved the Constitution, that he didn't even vote for Trump, says the Constitution does not allow for what you're even accusing the president of doing to meet the standard of removal from office. And then the Democrats come back and say, well, Dershowitz doesn't know what he's talking about. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, so well, if, if, it, I don't, if I don't know the Constitution, do I just have to sit there and go, well, one of them sounded more credible than the other? Well, I think, and again, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I, I'm going to tell you my take on it. Right. I think when you use the term high crimes and misdemeanors, it's vague. It's very vague. So... It is in a list with treason, bribery, and those kind of things. Um, so I think we can assume it should be at that level if we remove a president. Again, no one in our history has ever been removed. Keep that in mind. We've never reached that level. Um, so I think they left it vague so each senator 
at any particular time in history could make up their own mind what that bar was. And then they will answer to the voters in their district who sent them there to do their bidding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you you can argue that back and forth. Um, I I think the best argument is you see how it's listed with these various crimes. Um, And again, I think everything in our country is so political. I can I can certainly see how somebody will think that if you hold up payment going somewhere, that that would be a quid pro quo and deserve punishment. I see that. I also see how while it was held up, it got there. So you can take that argument. There really was never a crime here. It was delayed. It never was a crime. Um, Was, you know, the president looking for an advantage on a political opponent or was he concerned about corruption? They, you know, you can argue both of those cases. And really, it just depends how you see it based on your political glasses you have on at the time. Well, that's it. It, it feels like right now, and it's always been this way to a degree, but, but it feels like right now because I think we, we have access, and this is the bizarre part, okay? We have access to information that is unprecedented, but we seem to be more infor- uninformed than we've ever been. <laughs> so, so how can that be? Is it just so much information it's hard to discern what is truth and not truth because just because you're you're consuming information doesn't mean you're consuming truth. Right, right. And and we have we have we know that now journalism is dead, and and I would even say this sometimes even on what would be considered conservative journalism, uh, I think sometimes you know I I pretty much know how the story is going to go, uh, uh, based on which channel I'm watching or yeah. listening to. Oh yeah, I think that's fair, and, and I think that's fair. Now, do I tend to agree with a conservative point of view just about every time? I do because my principles are conservative. But I think we can't lose the ability, and I hope I haven't lost it. I, I don't. I, I try not to, to even look at um, a candidate that maybe I voted for or to look at a policy that even the party that I may vote for for right now 10 out of 10 times because there's no way I'd vote right. for – Democrat for anything right now because of what the Democratic Party has become. Right. Uh, I, I don't. And they're not the party of our parents. No, not even close. The the Republicans represent me as best as I can get. Right. But there's a lot of things the Republicans, you and I, like we've said, we used, we used to make fun of this, and now you know with with him just receiving the Presidential you know Medal of Freedom, we we joked often that Bub and I make Rush Limbaugh look like a moderate. Right. Uh, and, and because the Republicans are not conservative enough for me. Right, right. In, in their modern form. And Donald Trump's not conservative enough for me. Right. But I will say this. Donald Trump is so far, so far ahead of the current Democratic Party to be in sync with me, it's not even close. Right. I, I, I don't have anything so I, it, it, that, I can, that I can say the Democrats do this and I'm, I agree with that. I can't think of anything. Right. Because the, 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 the way they are right now, they are a socialistic, giant, tyrannical, immoral uh, uh, version of America, and, and I don't like it. And then all they can turn back and say, yeah, but Donald Trump's mean. <laughs> so, so but, but I guess what I'm saying, are we getting to the point, you and I are big football fans, it's, it, we're getting to the point where if it, it's becoming like football teams. Whatever my team does is right, no matter what. And whatever, t- whatever the other team does is wrong, no matter what. Like, for instance, we just heard, Nancy Pelosi, before we recorded this, say that Donald Trump misrepresented infrastructure. And he said, we have to do something about the infrastructure of this country. And I'm calling on all of you here that make up Congress to pass this infrastructure bill. Right. And then she says, well, that's nothing to be applauded. (laughs) <laughs> and, the, and then says we need to do something about infrastructure. Right. You right. see what I'm talking about? It yeah, gets frustrating it, yeah. as a citizen going, so no matter what the opposing party said, you're always going to be against it, even if they agree with you? Well, and I think to what you said, I, I have a vision of how things ought to be. Mm-hmm. I have some uh, things that are non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. I have some areas that I am slightly negotiable in. And it just so happens at this day and time the Republicans are closer to That's my right. view Right. than the Democrats or Libertarians or whoever. Um, so that's that's where I line up. Um, but it's it's just amazing to watch this as we've got a little bit older, since we've got a little history to us now, how far this divide has gone, especially toward the left. Um, 
the the idea that it's okay to pray and you know that uh, we should keep most of the money we earn and that the government should be somewhat responsible where they're spending. I mean, those things have been around a long time. The things we're pushing now from the left are are new and weird and strange, and where they have been tried in the past, they didn't work. That's why I don't agree with socialism. I don't agree with communism. Do you think the suggestion is now is is the great life truth? If you really want to know, because I don't think you you the days of saying I know what the truth is, I'm just going to listen to what people say. That's over. Truth is is like is like trying to nail Jello to the wall right now. And, it, it, and it's I'm in not, the eye of the beholder, yeah. much like beauty. Right. And I'm not talking about the things you and I believe spiritually. Right. We believe that is the truth. Right. And, and and I'm talking about politics in our country right now. So would you say this? Let's say, for instance, the State of the Union, Donald Trump gets up and he says, this is the economy, this is unemployment, this is this, this is taxes, bam, 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 bam. He lists all these wonderful things that people like you and I, uh, yep. most, most all of it. Now, he threw a few government programs in there that some of my Republican brothers and sisters that are in a Trump trance just kind of ignored. Uh, okay, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying, for the most part, he was saying America is churning. The economy is churning. Everything's churning. This is a time to celebrate. And then the Democrats say, no, it's not. So if I'm trying to figure out if that's true or not, no matter what my political leanings may have been, isn't the truth that I just look at my life? Ronald Reagan's a great phrase, you know, when he ran for re-election, 49 out of 50 states. Right. Won't see that again in a while. When he said, just look at your life, and when my administration took over, did it make your life better or is your life worse? Isn't that what we ultimately have to do is just look at our life and say, I'm working, I'm making good money, I'm paying lower taxes, uh, or I'm not? Isn't that what will ultimately be the truth? Because I just I think we're getting to the point that if a politician's mouth is moving, we can't bank on it. So so where do we find out where the truth really lies? And I guess it would be what's really happening. Well, and all that depends on who you want to get your news from. I mean, we but I'm in your we, own life. Well, we we were just watching Nancy Pelosi mm-hmm. uh, make a speech, and she said that uh, Trump's stock market has come nowhere close to what Barack Obama's hey, did. Perfect example. I, I mean, I just I, I can't follow that at all. I, nothing, I mean, level, I don't, I don't, I don't get where it is. It, it is funny going into this, you're, it's going to be a very complicated, I mean, when it all gets down, it'll be looked at in wins and losses. You know, who won, who lost? Well, we don't know if the demos are going to pick up seats or lose them. We don't know if the Republicans are going to pick up seats and lose them. We don't know if Trump will be reelected or not. Um, I will say this. I think Trump's base is fired up more than it's ever been. I think it has galvanized uh, his support. Um, I think some of the Democratic leaders have probably increased their grip on power in the House because they delivered on impeachment, which is something they ran on, even though there hadn't been a crime committed at that point or an impeachable offense, let me put it that way. Um, so I think with some of that, but you also see this huge split in the Democratic Party. You've got the AOCs and the squad and the far left, and they are trying to carry us to total socialism. I mean, they, I think it was Bernie come out this week, said he wanted to uh, nationalize all the power plants. Yep. I mean, that's take them away from your power company, and now the government owns them. I mean, that's, that's what they did in Venezuela, by the way. Um, you know, that, that's just really crazy stuff. And then uh, everybody's have, college should be free. I saw a special yeah, on that. Yeah, well, that's and, great. And, and that's then great everybody idea. says just what you've said and we've said. No, no, there's no such thing as that. What what Bernie is trying to propose is that somebody else pays for your college. Yeah, that, that, it, that's what he's proposing. Well, think about this 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 concept of free college. I mean, really, I, I mean, I hate to just call this what it is, but it's a it's a it's like a, a pyramid thing. It's a it never ends because if the if the if the government comes in right now and says, okay. Bill Bubba Bussy, we're paying for your college. It's going to be free. Well, I'm great. I love that. I go to college, and when I get out and start working, guess what? I have these super high taxes. Well, now I'm paying for somebody else's college who's behind me. You're still paid for a college education. You just didn't pay for years. You paid for somebody else's. So you still pay for one. There's no free in this. There's. It's always somebody has to pay for it. And, um, 
you know, Trump has a lot to, uh, to, to brag about going into the election. The economy is doing well, uh, rising wages, record unemployment, uh, impressive job growth. Um, the consumer report, let's see, we had a report here just a minute ago, it, and it was from Gallup, uh, who, you know, was no conservative bunch, that consumer confidence and happiness in our country was is, is at an all-time high. It was like 90% of the people are happy with their life. So, um, you know, there's a lot going on with that. I don't know that some of these people who – and this is going to be, I think, very intriguing to watch. You have some people who – don't always help the Republicans lock, stock, and barrel. You have the yeah. senator from Maine, the senator from Alaska. Mitt Romney now will be in that category. Um, and some of them, I know the, the, the lady from Maine is in a very going to be a very tightly contested race. So if the Republicans get on her for not supporting their issues, and she, she votes against them sometimes, and they – they do that to the point that they lose that seat to a Democrat, have they gained or lost? You know, it's almost like danged if you do, danged if you don't. So um, with the split as, as close as it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see how some of these things play out. Um, I don't think you're going to see Trump's style change. I think we can put that to bed. He's going to keep no. the same uh, way that he does business, and it's going to inf- infuriate uh, a lot on the left. So... I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It's uh, it, it will be an interesting campaign, uh, to say the least. I do know this. The economy is churning along. We're in a business that depends on the economy. Um, you know, we know it's doing good. I don't need num- numbers from the government to know that. I know a lot of people are working who used to not work. Uh, I know that if you're trying to find a job, um, you know, th- there's plenty out there. If you want to work, you can probably find a spot. So, yeah, we were looking at and, and I, I wish we could, as Americans, lose the D or the R for a minute, get together on a couple of things and say, this economy is going good. Why is it going good? Now, as you saw, the, the demos are never even going to admit that because they feel like that helps Trump. You know, it's, if, the, well, that's if it the helps problem. the other guy, yeah. it can't be good for America. But they, there are some things that are good for America, even if it is helps the other side out. And the economy doing good is one of them. And I think we need to look real close at why it's doing good and try to emulate that. I mean, if I was giving the Democrats advice, I would say, Say the economy is good, we're going to keep it going, and we're going to do these other great things too. Right. Because when you – but but the ideologies are so far apart now, you can't do that. You can't have an economy that's doing good with all businesses doing good because the left thinks that's destroying the planet. Right. So they have to destroy that. I mean, we have a couple of candidates running for president who said that they're going to shut down all fossil fuel production. I mean, I don't know how, what, how, what in the Constitution is going to allow them to do that. Right. But they're going to do it through executive order and taxes and all this. They want us to be a totally green economy, but the fact is that technology doesn't exist yet. So I don't know. It's like we're, at a, a, we're so far off the page that we can't agree on anything. So to that point, do you think, that we've gotten so far off the page as Americans, have, have, has the Democratic Party underestimated how far off the page we are? When you see coming out of Iowa and you see the two leading candidates, and by the time we recorded this, 97% of the votes were in, and a socialist and a gay man with a husband were the top two Democratic candidates who got the most votes uh, in the Iowa caucus. Do you think America is that far off the page that the the majority of Americans embrace a socialist and a gay man with a husband in the White House? Well, twenty years ago, they they wouldn't even they they would have been a non-starter. I mean, right. even back with John Kerry and Michael Dukakis when they ran, they would have been a non-starter. So I, it's it's amazing how far it's going in that direction. So, and you see people like James Carville. Right. Who seems to think who is a Democrat? Right. You know, he was a Clinton Democrat. He thinks the party is miscalculating this, and they're leaving. They're leaving the farm. 
Yeah, he, and, he, he came out and said this yeah. week he feels like the Democrats are in trouble. And it is based on the fact he thinks they have gone too far left too fast. And even if you want to do that and you do believe in it, you're turning up the water too, too fast and the frog's going to jump out of the pot. Yeah, and I think this goes back to us. You know, we've kind of – it's like America. One of the meanest things you can do is dare suggest that there be some critical thinking. <laughs> You realize at one time our, our country was great because we were, as citizens, critical thinkers. Right. Now we, we're, we're getting a generation of, of, of people that, that, are, that have never been taught to think critically because they think to think critically is somehow mean. And, and, I, and like when we, we talked about this earlier and with the Rush Limbaugh, we have, we have Acosta on CNN saying that, well, the president in the State of the Union was saying all these wonderful things about African Americans – but then gives the Medal of Freedom to Rush Limbaugh, who has a history of saying derogatory things about African Americans. Well, then we have Rush Limbaugh's phone screener and, and producer, producer yeah. for the last 30 years who's African American demanding that Acosta give examples of Rush Limbaugh being derogatory about African Americans. And so, but you will go out with a generation and you'll bring up Rush Limbaugh or even Trump, and they'll say, well, racist. Well, why is he a racist? You know, prove to me he's a racist. Well, he is. Well, okay, but prove to me he is. It's like we don't have the ability anymore. There's a, there's a large number of our population, and I would, I would just plead with anybody that's listening to this or watching this that has young people in the home, we must teach our children and our grandchildren to return and, and try to adapt the ability – to critically think through something and not just hear someone make a blanket statement and you not demand that they prove what they're saying or well, give examples. Yeah, well, the the thing, too, I think you, you saw, and one reason we, we love Rush is he he changed our industry. Yeah. He broke through. He, he literally broke through and gave a conservative voice in a media that was completely dominated by liberals. No doubt. Yeah. We just didn't know how liberal they were because they had every outlet at right. the time. Uh, that gave rise to Fox News and other outlets and a lot of talk shows that are conservative now and, you know, the Hannity's and the, and the Glenn Beck's of the world and, and all that. Um, but one area the conservatives have absolutely made no progress on is breaking the liberals' grip on the education system. That's so true. And, you know, I know my my kids, and I know you've had the same thing, and we've had interns here, they they come in and they tell us some of the things they're taught in their classes, and it's absolutely bizarro slash scary what they're being taught um, and the way that things are going on. And basically they're trying to reprogram them of the 18 years of what I've taught them and, and their mom's taught no, you're them. right. And, so, they, and they charge you a lot of money. To do yeah, that. they do. And uh, so I think, you know, from a critical thinking conservative standpoint, we've got to make some 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 inroads on that. I know there's some universities that are more conservative yeah. now yeah. popping up. But I, I think overall we've got to make some inroads in education uh, and get back to teaching what made this country great. No doubt. and, uh, and Because so- they don't know. They're not taught that. So <laughs> – Naturally, socialistic ideas are an easy sell to the uninformed masses. It always has been, uh, or no one would ever go into it. So I, I think we're doing a great disservice to our young folks that we don't give them a better rounded, more critical thinking education. No doubt. So let's talk about Mitt Romney for a minute. I think Mitt. Rick, what, what in the world is he doing? Well, I, I don't know his political play here, but honestly, I think more is being made of it than really what it's worth. Mm-hmm. Look, he's a senator. He can vote how he wants to. Right. Okay? Yeah, he can. He, he's not bound to do anything but make his best judgment. I don't know why he did that. It didn't make a lot of sense. We've had three impeachments. We've had 100 senators vote uh, in each one of those, so that's 300 votes. Not one senator has ever voted to remove a president of his own party, except for Mitt Romney. I don't know what his play is. I think they're making more of it, really. I mean, two weeks from now, nobody's going to care. Who? I mean, he was he was acquitted. That's all that's going to matter. But will the people of Utah care? Well, I don't know. That'll be a problem the people of Utah will have to work out. Will the Republican Party care? Well, again, 
uh, because the the break in the Senate is so close right now. Uh, you don't if you alienate Romney to the point that he becomes an independent and starts voting with the Democrats, then you you, you got problems because it's very very close. Now again, let's let's go back talking about impeachment. You have to have sixty seven votes to do that. When this thing started, there was no hope Trump was going to be removed from office. Yeah, we so, talked about that on the and, show. And I, I don't know why politically they thought this was going to be a good idea. The only thing I can figure, because Nancy Pelosi's mentioned this several times, and we saw her do it again a minute ago, she said, once you're impeached, you're always impeached. It's, you're, you're marked forever. It's a stain on you. So I guess they think that that was worth what they've put the country through to have Donald Trump be in the history book as impeached. I don't know. But he yeah, wasn't removed. Yeah, to what, Nothing has changed. Yeah. He's still president. Um, she's still Speaker of the House. So, you know, what changed? Was it worth everything we went through? Well, and that's here we go again. So you and I have to have to discuss that. So if Romney, I'll start there first. If he says what he says Romney. is true, I don't care if it destroys me politically. This was a moral, spiritual decision based on my faith that I think this president should be removed. Uh, and uh, and he says, don't care what happens to me politically. Okay, well, then then we'll see. Then we get over to the Democrats and their play on this. We want it forever be known that Donald Trump was impeached, okay? And politically, that's going to help you how? See, I would tend to think this constant attack on Trump allows him to play the victim card to his base, and even those that are kind of kicking the tires on it, that are sick and tired of this, and to try to remove a duly elected president, if you go back and look at even Bill Clinton, if you look at the numbers from the Republicans in Congress, their numbers were going down because Americans didn't like the idea, no matter what happened, right. that, that somebody was going to circumvent their voice and remove a president that they elected to be there. And they had a Bill Clinton committing a crime. He lied under oath. Right. And, and, even, and, he, and he paid some penalties for that, uh, for doing that. But the American people did not want him removed right. from president. Right. And the, and the Republicans, you know, licked their fingers, stuck it up in the political air, and said, we better not do this because it's going to cost us politically. But the Democrats, for some reason, don't feel that way. They, they, they feel like that this is a good play for them, but I can't figure out, because the only people this makes happy were people they, they were going to get to vote for him anyway, and that wasn't enough in the last election. So how does this, you know, um, go go to those that they 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 intend to move over to them? D- does it intrigue those people to say, you know what, I was going to vote for Trump again, but since you tried to impeach him, I think I'm going to vote for your candidate. That, yeah, I, I, I don't I, know. I, I think I think that's a good comparison with Bill Clinton. I don't remember if the I don't know if the Republicans had the majority. It was very close yeah. either way. Their, and, appro- their approval numbers went down. Yeah, 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 it went down. And, again, I think they, th- some of them were smart enough to know, even beyond that, that if you start this removing of a president, the next Republican we have, and they're going to run him through the same mill. And some of that was Trump payback for Clinton here. Some of those same players were playing in that. So, but, again, y- you open this Pandora's box. Don't you think the Republicans – now, the next time they get in charge of the House, they're going to be looking for any impeachable offense and we they can bring up. And we don't need that as a country. We just well, don't I know. need it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But, but again, You're right. the Republicans felt that circuit breaker during Clinton. The Democrats did not feel that circuit breaker during Trump. So, you know, where, where do you go? How do you, how do you get back to working together for a common cause when you're your political agendas are, are like a Y in the road. They're so far apart. Yeah, I don't know. And, and, and you know, one of the things that you, you have to kind of be careful of, you know, you saw Romney coming out and, and talking about the spiritual side of it. We didn't really do the story because the guy, but I can I can tell you the, just the mentality because we've seen this. Heck, we had a dust up on our show, you know, with someone who's a pretty, you know, high-ranking person in, in our faith, you know, you and I as followers of Christ and, and being Christians. And, you know, the evangelicals are a very important vote, you know, every every time a president is up for election. And there's there's getting to be because there's a there's a very tough mentality out there right now, and I don't know where it comes from, and I think it's dangerous, that the ultimate goal of a Christian, the ultimate goal 
is to be considered nice. That's the ultimate goal. Right now, that is not biblical. The, yeah, that that, that wouldn't be true that, with that, that, Jesus that, or many of his followers. No, and we can go example after example after example. But again, if people don't know scriptures and all they've been told is 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 from the pulpit, so we have another pastor now that makes a comment which is outlandish that Christians would be better off rejecting Trump because he's mean and going over to the Democratic side where we have a five to four vote that that took an ancient well understood standard for marriage out of the out of the Holy Bible and our history as Americans that that would be changed. It was their party. It was the Democrats that did that. They took God's standard for marriage and they they rejected it. And then, as you said a minute ago, they started saying, "Well, babies can be terminated early in pregnancy, then later, and then later, and then later, and then post birth." Yeah. If the if the mom didn't want this baby, we- see, I, I didn't even think that was conceivable even by the left you know well i thought we all agreed left or right that life does begin after birth I, I thought that was well understood but see that's not even a given anymore and we're gonna have a pastor say that somehow the christians will be better off with the democrats than donald trump and 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 see that's that's dangerous because here's someone in leadership that may have a, a, a you know some young evangelicals or you know may i don't know maybe they think being saying evangelicals even mean now I've, I've often not understood that when somebody says you're an evangelical. What other kind of Christian is there? You know, because that's what Scripture says we should be. But if they they are told these kind of things, we have to stop and just say for a minute, you don't have to do. It. Whoa, whoa, well, because, and and that's why I'm worried about that some of this what Romney's going to this did is going to be, you know, misconstrued is is that same mentality. You have to look and realize the role of government as a Christian first off is in Romans 13. And it, it's it's there saying that God will ordain these things to keep order in a fallen creation. Yep. It's your it's your it's your punish evil doers. It's your, it's your yep. wicked hearts that have made yep. a a man made government even needed needed. Yeah. So, but you have to look at Trump and say, well, whether you want to, you know, give any kind of assessment by the fruit he bears on whether he himself is a true follower of Christ. I think that's a certainly a conversation you can have about anybody. Yeah. Rick Burgess included. And hopefully I can, you know, if I'm accused of being a Christian and I go before a judge and a, a jury of my peers, they would find me guilty of being a Christian by the way I've lived my life. You know, not not my not all of my life, but the current period of my life. But you can't say, you can't, help me, that the Democrat Party is a friend of the church more so than Donald Trump has been. You, you can't make I, that I, argument. I, I can't make that argument. And a pastor not being able to think that through, you know, because somebody's mean and, and rude or, or something like that versus where life begins and God's standard. By the way, God's standard, and the reason why marriage has been destroyed is because God holds it in such high regard. And it's so clear. And, such a building block. And, and, yep. and, 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 and male and female, he made them. And the Democratic Party takes gender and throws it away, where life begins and throws it away, the standard for marriage and throws it away. And a pastor is going to stand in a church and say that you should reject Donald Trump and go over and try to make deals with Democrats, modern day Democrats. Now, can anybody? Yeah, well, how, that doesn't how, make a lot of sense. Because then we go back to what has happened. Donald Trump says, and and, and this is what this is where I think this pastor and um, that that has done this. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name. Rob, is it Rice R Y E R S E Rice or Rice? Anyway, so he is uh, he's in Fayetteville, Arkansas, at Vintage Fellowship. Well, he, he himself says that Donald Trump has changed his mind on where life begins for political reasons. Well, the only problem is, Robbie, if you took the time to look at history, he changed his view in 2011. All right, he, he had friends that he talked to, to that he found out that they were either adopted or something had happened and somebody had, had, had thought of aborting them and it didn't happen. He started hearing the science on it, and he himself – I used to be pro-choice, okay? So people do change, and what, what he tries to tell his congregation, which I think is very dangerous, that he's going to judge that Donald Trump changed his view on where life began for political reasons when it's well-documented that he changed his view in 2011. 
Well, see, that's not good to have a pastor that doesn't doesn't tell the truth of the matter. And the pastor certainly can get up there and say, "Hey, let's let's keep politicians where they belong." I don't, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump is on a journey with his faith. I, I, you know, he certainly may not be ready to represent our faith well, but in the office of the president, he has been a friend to the church and the, the rulings that he's making and some of the freedoms that he's restoring to the church, we certainly should be, should be happy or glad with, and we should applaud that. But to say that Donald Trump is, is not as good a partner for the church as the current Democratic Party is crazy irresponsible. Well, you may use that term pastor loosely. There, you, That's my point. It, um, well, see, you know why? You know what I can point to? He said something that wasn't true about when the when, when Donald Trump changed his mind on where life began. See, he said something that wasn't true. And, and, if, and if you look up there, you, the great Adrian Rogers used to say this, if you're ever looking for the devil, never fail to check out that pulpit. You know, because sometimes he's sitting right up there. So wouldn't you, wouldn't you have, and I'm not judging this pastor's salvation or his eternity, but I do have a problem with somebody trying to tell me something when I can point to a lie they just said in their presentation. Yeah, to well, me that, to I, me that's a red flag for to, me. To me, when you you click down the tenets of being a Christian, he's obviously uh, you know he he's off base on some of that. But that you know he have to work that out for sure. He won't be the first one, I sure. Yeah, you. well, the, so this political environment that we're in right now is, uh, I mean, I, I would go back to the Civil War problem. As, as far as well, we're not shooting at each other yet, but right. uh, it, it's it's a it's a wide divide right now, and it's uh, it's funny. I, you know, probably back in in that they they had one or two issues that drove that. On other issues, I don't I don't think they were as far apart. I mean, you're right. Yeah, that's obviously a- the states' right slavery issue was the driving force in that. But you know, I think probably both sides felt the same about religion at that time. You know. It's true. If you read the writings of the generals, the way that they prayed and asked for success no, on the battlefield, right. yeah. um, marriage. I mean, they you know there wasn't a lot of that then. Um, so no, you're right. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a di- it's a different divide today for sure. And they're really strong divides. And and, and but that's okay. Right now, and we we have been afforded by our founders the right to express ourselves. And there's something. There's nothing wrong with that. Now we've lost class and we've lost civility and. Of course, the Democrats will just tell you, as as a as a small child would, I didn't do it, he did. You know, I didn't do it. Who who broke this? I didn't do it, he did. And that's what they're doing. Hey, we've got a really uncivil political environment right now. We didn't do it. Trump did. No, you guys, you guys. Trump stood up to you. You're used to getting your way, and your old playbook doesn't work with him. But you keep tearing those pages out and screaming racism and. You know all of this, the usual plays that you have. So, it's uh, I, I I do think in the election coming up, Bloomberg is going to be an interesting component to the to the yeah. uh, electoral process for the demos. And I still think Hillary is going to try to swing in last minute. Yeah, your prediction, and, and, and we got about three minutes left. Your prediction is that Hillary still is going to come in. Yeah, I think she's going to try to come in. I don't know if she will or not. I don't think of any. I don't think any of the candidates you see right now will be the nominee though. It'll either be Bloomberg or her. Oh, really? So you don't think any of these no. that are out there vying no. right now, they'll never make it? Because no, the, Dem- no. the Democrats do allow themselves an out. Yeah, well, think, too. They're, I mean, they're in uh, some of the smaller states right now population-wise. And, uh, you know, the, I, I don't think you're going to see that support for some of these uh, fringe candidates when you get to some of the bigger states, especially in the South. I think you're going to have a problem with some of those. I think Bloomberg would be uh, – it's going to be a more palatable uh, – Answer for them for a lot of them. I think I think Joe would be if he if he wasn't acting like he was slipping. Yeah, I, Joe Joe Biden just seems like and and I don't mean that to be mean. I have aging no, I have just, aging yeah. parents right now. Your parents have, have passed. Yeah, my mom been, went through. It. You yeah. went through that. He he's showing signs, uh, and I'm not a doctor, but I'm just talking about he's showing signs of his age. I'm yeah, just, well, he I'm just, just he that. just doesn't appear as sharp right. in his public speaking that uh, as he used to be. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. You know, that's the, the great American experiment will continue, and we got a front row seat to it. We do, and uh, so uh, we've enjoyed breaking that down for you on this edition of, of Rick and Bubba University, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next Rick and Bubba University next week. Be sure and catch us weekdays on the Rick and Bubba Show. You can find everything that you could possibly ever want to know at rickandbubba.com. Thanks for being here for this edition of Rick and Bubba University.